I watched a segment of Mike Tyson. And the one thing that he says is when I look you in the eye, you start looking left and right. I already won the fight. And so when I would come up to the kickers and I would walk by them, like in the area where they set up punts and stuff like that. And I would ask them, you gonna kick it to me today? And when they would ignore me, I knew I had already won the fight. That they was nervous. Come on, D-Hat. Show them why you the best at this, bruh. Show them why you the best today. How can Devin Hester not be a Hall of Famer? Devin has to change the darn game. And I don't think there's a question that Devin is the best player in a returner position. I mean, he revolutionized the game of football and how coaches have to cover kicks now. If you are definitely and far away the best player ever at your position, by far, there's no comparison, you're in. 7,333 kick return yards. Five for touchdowns. Touchdown! Devin Hester has run into the NFL. 3,695 punt return yards, 14 for touchdowns. And that, my friends, is a dozen for Devin. And one return touchdown off a missed field goal. 15, 10, 5, oh, touchdown! No way. They did it again! No way. 20. 20 returns in an 11 year career in the National Football League. Fast turn. I mean, it's good for fast people like me. Devin Hester did more than just dazzle us with his 4-4-3, 40-yard speed and his breakneck cutting ability. Oh, sweet home, man. The man changed the game. 30, 30 of the coach, 20, 15, Hester 5. Oh! Touchdown, Bears! No way! Hey, guys, we have a special player on our football team. Game ball, Devin Hester! How does the greatest return of, of all time not get in the Hall of Fame first ballot? I'm having a hard time putting that all together. No returner has yet been enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But as ridiculous as Hester was on the field, it's about time for any time. That whole process was, it was very exciting for me. Um, I was like, wow, man, I'm going to be the first guy, first returner, you know what I mean? The first to open up. The page for a lot of guys that's behind me that's trying to knock on the door. My thinking back in my back of my head, I didn't make. I wasn't first draft pick, but at least I can make the first ballot, be a first ballot Hall of Fame. You know that that did come up, and when I got that call, it, it destroyed me. Like I boo hoo cried. I I called and, and talked to the head guy over the Hall of Fame and asked him like, I want to have a personal conversation with you, because I really want to know what was told. Like, what went on in the meetings? The story was, as you was a very unique situation, you was a very unique person. Um, we, the voters that didn't vote for you, was just proving the case that the guys, that the list you was competing against, these guys had a right. thousand plays more than you. You know what I mean? So we based it off of that. I said, well, okay, um, I know you picked five from the top 10. I just want to know what, what number was I? Say so you was the last one. You was the sixth man. We picked five, you was the sixth one to get cut. You was the last one to get cut. And I say, okay, wow. Sixth man to get cut. I say, but explain to me, what is the Hall of Fame? And so he said, well, it's a guy that consistently does greatness year in, year out, makes the Pro Bowl, consistent base, um, makes all pro team, and is well known around the league and is well known as a player when he's out there. I say, I appreciate your, your, your compliment because you're talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> I say, I appreciate it. I say, how many players on this list that make the top 100? How many players in the Hall of Fame that made the top 100 list. We talking about, we're not talking about the Hall of Fame, we're talking about the, the greatest 100 players of all time. And you got one sitting right here that, that didn't make the Hall of Fame. Like, how can I not make the Hall of Fame when I made the top 100? Like, I don't get it. Like, you have over 300 players in the Hall of Fame. How, how, do, I, how do I slide through the crack? Because you saying I don't have enough snaps. But when you talk about it, you explain the Hall of Fame to me, you, you based it off of a player that's one of the most feared players in the league, Chet Box. 
that teams prepare for it week in, week out, and can't sleep, check box. Player that makes the whole the Pro Bowl, check box. Player that makes the all pro team, check box. Player that made the all decade team, two checks. You forgetting one? A player who revolutionized how teams had to figure out how to prepare for one man. Yeah. And you change the way it's done. And you change the rule. Period. You change the rule. Change the rule too. You change the rule. And in reality, if people don't know the, the rule was changed because of me. It's a fact. This is a guy that you can deal with, that you had the game plan that took over the game, changed the game no matter what. You knew unequivocally what he was going to do during that game that you paid your ticket or you turned on your, t turned on your TV to go watch. And he did that. So how in the world do you pick some of these guys and Devin Hester is not in the Hall of Fame? Everybody knew when he had the ball in his hands, he was different. He did it differently than anybody that had ever returned kicks and punts, and that to me is what signifies a Hall of Famer. If you are one of one, you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. I love all the guys that are going in, but they got it absolutely wrong when it comes to Devin Hester. But the crazy thing about it is, this is facts. I've been the sixth man get cut two years in a row. To sick the last person They're to get afraid cut. to pull the two trigger years, on two it, years I guess. In a row. Yeah. Two years back to back, yeah. since I've been here, well, two years in a row, I've been the last guy to get cut. Dan Pompey, who's on the, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame himself, in the writer's section, and is, is your biggest uh, supporter, interviewed a lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of coordinators. You made them psycho. Yeah. They didn't know what to do with you. Right, right. Uh, you had that much of an impact. To go out there and have three or four returns and still have an impact on the game as a starting running back that carried the ball 25, 30 times a game. It's special. And I see why they call it special team. Because you have to be a special person to do it if you're great at it. It's not many that can say that. And in the situation that I was in, to really, really strike fear in opponents with only touching the ball three or four times a game. That speaks volumes. I watched the segment of Mike Tyson. And one thing that he says, when I look you in the eye, you start looking left and right. I already won the fight. And so when I would come up to the kickers and I would walk by them, like in the area where they set up punts and stuff like that, and I would ask them, you going to kick it to me today? And when they would ignore me, I knew I had already won the fight, that they was nervous. Rugby style punt, high in the air. Backs Devin Hester up. Hester has some room, cutting back. Gets a block 20. Hester left 30. Hester to the 50. Hester's on his horse 30. Dances into the end zone. Touchdown, Devin Hester. <laughs> How would they just put me back there and save it right now, dog? I just want to get a, I just want to get an interception, dog. Turn. I'm a house it too. You think I'm gonna take a knee? Hell no. Oh. no you're not. <laughs> it's not really a lot of people that can say that. They play offense and defense their whole life in every aspect from Pop Warner to high school to the NFL. I did both. But because of what I can do with the ball in my hands. You were too valuable. It was just, you know, Coach Lovey just, he pulled me to the office after my first year. And I was like, damn, my, I know, because I boohoo cried when he told me. He was like, hey, man. I know you're a corner. I know teams are gonna start kicking away from you. It's been proven. What you did with the ball in your hand, I had never seen a guy like that. I'm preparing myself because I know teams are gonna start kicking away from you. So we have to find ways to get the ball in your hand. It's, what you do with the ball in your hand is very special. I boohoo cried because I said, Coach, I had this same situation from Pop Warner to high school, to college, where I never just thought on one side of the ball and just dominated. So I was so fear and so scared to yeah. move over to the offensive side of the ball because the trauma that I had in college, I was scared of that trauma. I didn't never understand offense. Let's get this straight, facts. I never understood offense. I never played a game where I went in saying that I was confident in everything that was called. Every time I broke the heart on my mind, was racing, 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 racing. Terrified, you know what I mean? What I got, what I got on this plate. 
You know what I mean? So that's a fact. So it really, really just limit me from playing fast to second guessing myself every time I go to the They're coming on the blitz or now the take. Throwing right side, leading Hester down the right side to the end zone. Sets to throw, guns the right sideline, over the shoulder, Hester, end zone, touchdown, touchdown Bears. Every week I was in a new meeting room, running back room, receiver room, DB room, safety room. So, and it, it traumatized me because I never was able to master one spot. So when he brought that up, it just crushed me because I'm like, here we go again. I sat out my whole junior year because I just can't play it around from room to room. And that was the biggest issue with me when I got drafted was, we don't know where to put him. Because yeah. he never solidified a position. The irony of that is, moving it forward to now, mm -hmm. your Hall of Fame candidacy, this will be year three. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost feels like they don't know what to do with you again. They still don't. You know, it's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen. Right. We've just explained why. Right. But uh, it, it's so weird for me to hear you talk like this because yeah. I, great athletes, it should be a no brainer. This is what you do. Also, give it up for Devin Hester, the all time. Yeah. Oh, Guys, you know how hard they we're talking about in the history of the game. Where are you at here. today? When it happens, it happens. But don't get me wrong, I'm still gonna be excited, you know what I mean? Yeah. As a as a player, you know, whenever you make the Hall of Fame, if you understand the game of football and you love it, that's the cream of the crop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm gonna treat it as I'm pretty sure I'm gonna treat it as the yeah. first yeah, battle. When you get that call, yeah. you're gonna be crying. Yeah. yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna be one of a, a few hundred yeah. in the 104. It, it, it's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna happen. And that's why I say right now it's it's just a matter of time. Go go taps on three, taps on three. One two three. Yeah. Yeah.